Hey, man, welcome back to Boston. We're here at the BECC, where the Cube started in 2010. Really delighted to have Crawford Del Pret, CEO of IDC, and Sanjeev Mohan, who's the principal at uh, Sanjmo, back inside the Cube. Guys, welcome. Great to see you. you. So, Crawford, let's start with you. You've been here all week. Uh, top takeaways from the show here. Yeah, so my top takeaway is that, uh, you know, a year ago when IBM announced Watson X, there was a lot of concern. They were going all the way to the top of the stack because that's what Watson did last time with, with, with Watson Health and uh, a lot of the other investments they made. It's very clear, in my opinion, they've zeroed in on what I'll call AI middleware. They're kind of going mm -hmm. after making sure that customers can take their enterprise data, use open source LLMs, use the tools that they have, that IBM is providing to really start to apply AI in a way that's valuable for those customers. And I think that's really, you and I have a long history covering IBM. I think that's really very central to IBM's long-term strategy. And for me, it's comforting that I think it's a reach they can achieve. And I think they've made great, really it's strong progress on it. It's like web sphere, I don't know, 3.0 now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, How about you? What were your big takeaways? Yeah, my big takeaway is IBM has really sharpened their focus, their laser focus. That middleware is, in Arvind's word, they are the, the software infrastructure layer. Yeah. Everything is infused by AI now. Yep. And, and it's cross-platform. So it's not just uh, um, IBM cloud. It's That's right. AWS and it's uh, every other cloud. Yeah. I mean, I... I tweet out or maybe I linked in that I haven't been this excited about IBM in probably a decade. Yeah. And Arvind's really done a, a, done a great job. You guys are both pretty close to it. What's your take on the organization, the focus, sort of the streamlining, um, and, and, and really, you know, the pillars. What, what is it? Hybrid, uh, AI, consulting. Yep. Uh, it, it seems like he's got the team really focused on those areas and they're yep. executing. Not, not that they don't have work to do. But. Yeah, yeah. So there's, a, th I think, I think there's a fair amount of work to do. But I think you know, look, Rick Lewis and the Hybrid Cloud Group, I think, are, are executing quite well. Um, to your point, you know, they're supporting multiple platforms. I think that they're also able to complement that with the systems that they have. I mean, we, we you know, when, when, when you look at the mainframe, we haven't seen such success out of the mainframe in the last couple. In of years. an off cycle, yeah. nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, it's it's mainframe's it, growing. Very, 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 very strong. I do think, though, that they're, where, where uh, I'd like to see them sharpen their message is, is really around consulting. Um, I still think that, um, obviously, the Kindrel deal made a lot of sense for the company from a P&L standpoint and from where they generate profits. But now, they're still not as crisp as I'd like to see on where they're going to bring IBM Consulting in and where they're going to partner with Deloitte, where they're going to partner with PwC, where they're going to partner with Accenture. And I think that could breed customer confusion going forward. So you're looking for a, a, a open openness in the same vein in consulting and services that they talk in and, in and, a, cl and a clarity and, and a yeah. clarity. I mean, I think they've sharpened their focus on security. Mm -hmm. They're applying AI to security. They brought up some, you know, really, really great selling points there. Like I said, strong message on hybrid. I don't, I'm not, not seeing that yet on consulting. Where does IBM in your view, Sanjeev, stack up relative to sort of the modern data data platforms, yeah. the snowflakes, the data bricks, and, and the, the cloud uh, hyperscalers. It's, they are offering some of the similar stuff, like Iceberg is a very big part of, of their offering. So the Lake House, so some of those things are similar to others, except the difference is that in IBM, they're trying to be this, this single pane of glass across hybrid and across cloud, like what you call super cloud. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you won't see that from Snowflake, Databricks, even AWS, Google Cloud, very focused on their own stack. But IBM, out of the box, has adopted not only other cloud, but open standards. Mm -hmm. So that is a big difference. I think that's where their key uh, differentiator you know, lies. I, I thought you would see it with Snowflake because architecturally it's kind of there, but right. it's, the business case is not there. People Correct. just don't deploy it that Correct. way. Correct. Yeah. Um, Crawford, what are you seeing as far as AI adoption? It's, it seems like the, the ROI on consumer AI, if Meta and yep. Twitter and Google can build million GPU clusters. I know they're not there yet, but <laughs> if they can, yeah. when they do, and the bigger the cluster, the more money they make, it seems. Right. So it's like no brainer for them. Mm. Seems like the, A, the ROI in enterprise is you know, not so obvious. They're hitting singles. What are you guys seeing in the data? Yeah, so we expect, you know, the AI is a category we have at 30% plus revenue growth for this year. I think what's interesting is, look, the, the IT industry is reinventing itself now as we get to this AI moment. 
What we're seeing now is what I'll call narrow AI. It's sort of horizontal use cases. And you see that with Copilot, you see that with Gemini, you see that in a lot of the LLMs that, that you already mentioned. I think the next era, though, is really going to bring what I'll call widening AI as we start to move into the enterprise and we start to unpack different use cases. And those use cases will first branch off of horizontal functions like sales and like ERP, but then eventually they'll get into healthcare, they'll get into manufacturing, they'll get into financial services. And I think that's a journey that we're going to see. And you know, right now, if you look at the, 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 the overall market for generative AI, we see that market growing to about $150, $152 billion between now and 2027. 150 60, by 27. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, 60 uh, percent of that is associated with infrastructure and semiconductors today. Hmm. You get out to 2027, software, services, uh, and uh, AI middleware and infrastructure, no category is bigger than 25 percent. So you're going to see a much more, you're going to see the beginning of the, the creation of a market. It's, so services is, is latent. In yeah, that yeah, equation. services is, is, is later, yeah. Uh, and you see NVIDIA's results? Today, I announced. haven't seen them yet. Yeah, okay, yeah. so I, I don't know. I haven't seen them either. I know the stock's up four and a half percent. Yeah, so <laughs> and, and, but I did see they did a stock split. So I don't know if oh, it's because they well. beat by. They, I thought they would have had a beat beat by one point five billion on the top line just to you know not yeah. tank the stock. But they're doing a stock split, so I wonder if that's yeah, why. You it's gotta, up. So you gotta, yeah, we got We got to dig into that. Yeah. yeah. But to to Crawford's point about um, the size of the market and the way that yeah. adoption is going to occur, the industry specificity. Yeah. What has to happen on the data side mm -hmm. in order for that? vision to come true. So on the data side, we need this uh, some sort of unification because a lot of these use cases you talked talked about in financial services yep. and healthcare is not just a structured data use case. It's structured data and unstructured data. You cannot possibly have silos of that. So we need uh, to have a unified storage with a unified metadata and a semantic layer. Because uh, AI is going to be a yet another use case, mm -hmm. just like you know, I do my analytics uh, yeah. today. I'm now going to do LLM-based uh, agents. So, so the data has to unify, and then to achieve these uh, domain-specific use cases, we are going to have these uh, small language models agents that uh, that have some reasoning capabilities, and they can talk to each other. Right. So they'll be like, you know, the way our human brain works, there are neurons and some mesh inside our, our brains. Same things going to happen to these small models uh, in an uh, in a mesh. Who's going to unify the metadata? Because it seems like. You know, the hyperscalers uh, yeah. are trying to do it, but AWS is quite a, not really that close. Correct. Microsoft looks like on paper they yeah. got an interesting story, but I'm not so sure how real it is. Right. Google, I don't, I don't really know as well. I'm curious as to your thoughts on, 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 on IBM and this semantic layer. It's yeah. like, it feels like it's elusive. How is IBM doing there? Ritika mentioned it today yep. in Correct. the keynote, the semantic layer. She a very about short open mention. Open table yes. formats. Yes. Yes. And I was talking yeah. to her about it yeah. on the cube. She said, well, stay tuned kind of yes. thing. Right. I've been tuned in for a while. <laughs> right? I'd, like to, well, I'd like to know your thoughts So, you know, th this is uh, a space that, you know, companies like at scale have been added since the Hadoop days. Yeah. You know, so right. uh, if you look at like Starbucks, DBT Labs, DBT, they've five created a five bit, right? but So th really, that's, they, they, they're a APIifying metrics, right? I mean, it's really what they're doing, but uh, that's right. So it, it's a metrics. Yeah. Yes, we want to go beyond that. It's it's a metadata for uh, business usage, formulas, KPIs, all of that, and now even AI models. I really believe that data catalog companies need to do it because if you're going to centralize it, so different multi-compute engines can access the same semantic layer, it cannot sit within a stack. It has to be cross stack. Yeah. So, so like Vritika said, we have to stay tuned. You know, we, we we don't have any standards. Everyone's doing it differently. So IDC goes. We know IDC from our history goes as the industry goes. When you know the mainframe, the vertically integrated stack blew up, and the industry went horizontal. Yeah. So did IDC. Right. When the internet came out, everybody wanted to be an internet analyst. So I'm sure the same thing with cloud. Right. Yeah. We were probably all COVID experts. During COVID. <laughs> yeah. How are you thinking about? The, the organization of research in this 
AI era. I'm sure everybody's an AI analyst. We yeah. all have. You have to be, or you're yeah, going to be correct. toast. Yeah. How do you organize for that? Yeah. So, so uh, obviously, there's core technology associated with AI, and we've got analysts that are covering that. But absolutely, um, as as we think about AI spreading out, AI will affect different layers of the stack, and it'll also affect different industries, right? So, the all of our industry analysts they'll rely on the core AI technology analysts, but they'll focus on how is AI being applied in those specific industries. So, for example, we already have over 200 use cases that we've identified that are even happening in horizontal areas. So, for example, uh, call center and then specific use cases mm. within call center. As we break those down, we all have analysts that will cover those specific areas as it relates to contact center research, for example, or as it relates to um, some other use case. So AI will infuse all specific areas. We made that same mistake with cloud, right? We had, you know, at one point we had like maybe four or five analysts covering cloud. It's, it's nonsense, right? There'd be people, people need, we need to be able to cover this technology across all domains. But it sounds like you've got a, a feeder group that really understands the depth of the AI and the Yeah, because the it's not necessary. We don't want to duplicate yeah. that. Right. in all those specific areas. What we want to understand is how is AI being applied? How are data catalogs being created to being used in AI? So in our data management group, we want those analysts to focus on the future of data catalogs, not necessarily what the next hot LLM is. We'll do that in the core yeah, AI group. Yeah. Speaking of uh, data catalogs. Yes, <laughs> so, go ahead. So, so a lot of these things like LLMs are really commodity. I would 100%. say I would say even the analytical engines. That's an interesting question. So you say you are on the commodity side. Yes. You too. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. You know there are those who are not, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah there are. Oh no. In so fact, when, won't commoditize. <laughs> <laughs> when I talk to analysts and they they want to write and talk about LLMs, I I tell them why would you care? You should be talking about the application of LLMs to mm -hmm. so solving some business problem. Yeah. That is uh, where the focus should be. You and I agree. Not clearly, LLMs. clearly, IBM yeah. with open source is, that's going to commoditize Meta is commoditizing yeah, you just saw you just saw it on stage yeah. with IBM this week yeah. they basically yes. said you know we'll make it on the service 12 yeah, months it, from now go ahead last yeah point. no no the last point i want to say is that when when mistral and llama 3 came out and they were free and open source uh, all of a sudden openai comes up with uh, gpt4 omni yeah. which is free yeah, yeah. It just completely disrupts the entire value proposition of having an open source free model because even a proprietary it's, model is free. It's that power law pulling it up, yeah. the torso up to <laughs> yeah. the right. Uh, last question for each of you, uh, Crawford, 12 months from now in your IBM Think 2025, what do you want to see that you can't say is there today? Um, I, I, I think to, what, what I'd like to see is uh, how they've advanced uh, each of these specific areas. So um, security, for example, how they build out their security story, how, you, how they actually can apply their technology to make sure that customers are getting um, you know, the right answers around, uh, uh, around working with, with, with an LLM and the security that's exposed there. Um, I, I, I think this is a journey. And I think as, uh, as you mentioned, as customers start to engage with LLMs, with their data, questions around the structure of their data. How easily can they can they actually catalog and index their data? How, how easy is it for them to get the answers they need to get? That's what I want to see um, going right. forward. Sanjeev? You know how when Google came out, it only had one button? And actually it had one button and then I feel lucky. You yeah, know, right. yeah. So, <laughs> That's where I want to see next year. I want a uh, LLMs and AI, generative AI to be at that level where businesses don't even think about it and they just have the, the simplest consumption. Yeah. It might take model. more than a year. Yeah, that? that's true. Yeah, but that's yeah. where you were Yeah, but, yeah. but that's and, where it's and, and the reason, yeah. One of the reasons I was said I was so excited about IBM and I haven't been in 10 years is I really feel as though the R&D and the product are coming together. Yeah. So what I want yeah. to see is consistent performance. We had a slight miss in revenue last quarter. I want to see a consistent performance of IBM, yeah, both correct. in the top line yeah. and the bottom line. But they're growing. Yeah, it, 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 yes, and I want to see that consistent yeah. growth. You know, yeah. constant currency, I'll give them that, yeah, that yeah. break. I, I'm, I'm cool with that. Guys, great analysis as yeah. usual. Thanks so much for Good making the time. You thank Absolutely. you really so wonderful yeah. having you. All right, and thank you for watching. This is a wrap. We're going to close the doors <laughs> on IBM Think <laughs> Wednesday. Really appreciate you watching. Thanks for IBM for hosting us. You're watching theCUBE. Go to siliconangle.com for all the news. TheCube.net, all these replays will be on demand. This and you're losing Vellante. your voice. This is Dave Vellante. Yes, I'm losing <laughs> my voice. But I made it through. It's been a busy week. We'll see you yeah. next time. Thank you.